US we will deal a little later. Uh, but what about Canada situation? Yeah, just imagine, you know, some time ago you would have said Canada we will deal with later. Let's talk about the US. <laughs> <laughs> so now, for some some inexplicable reason, you are saying US baad mein baat karenge. Chalo Canada ki baat karte. US and Canada are main players in the Western part of the world. Uh, US we will deal a little later. Uh, but what about Canada situation? How are we dealing with it? Uh, now, have we contained yeah, just it? imagine, you know, some time ago you would have said Canada we will deal with later. Let's talk about the US. <laughs> <laughs> so now, for some some inexplicable reason, you are saying US baad mein baat karenge. Chalo, Canada ki baat karenge. U.S. is not problematic for us. No, that's true. I agree. Hmm? I agree. Yeah. U.S. is not problematic for us. But Canada is, even though it's, it's a lightweight. Unfortunately, I agree there also. <laughs> <laughs> but such a such a such a uh, wonderful people to people relationship, and now it is a struggling economy and whatever. But why Trudeau will be doing this? Uh, I think. Uh, you know, that's a question you need to have Trudeau here, not Jay Shankar, to answer. I can, I can uh, only speculate. Uh, you know, uh, look, to some extent, I think uh, there, are, uh, there is a general Western uh, issue, and to some extent, a very specific Canada issue. I think the Western issue has been, uh, after all, let's be frank, uh, the world order after 1945 was heavily Western. I mean, it was before 45 also in an imperial colonial sense. Uh, and uh, after 1990s, uh, it was again very, very Western. So what has happened, you can say, in the last 20, 25 years is that uh, the, there is what you can call a rebalancing, a multipolarity, Many non-Western countries have a bigger share, a bigger contribution, a bigger role, uh, if you would, and a bigger influence which will naturally come. So the equations, in a way, between the West and the non-West, I think is changing. And it's not easy to adjust to that. You know, if you've been dominant and you are less dominant, you know, if... Uh, there was a time when, you know, in the conversation, you were looking up and I was looking down. And now the conversation is no longer like that. It takes a little bit of getting used to. So I would say in a, in a broad way on multiple subjects. Uh, today, this, this, uh, uh, the, when the natural diversity of the world has started to express itself, when many more countries, and particularly many more large countries like India or China, uh, have uh, points of view and positions to take, uh, there will be, there will be uh, contestations, there will be frictions, there will be arguments. Uh, so it won't be so smooth. You know, that's, that's a larger picture. Uh, where Canada is concerned, I think there are some very specific issues. I think a lot of people know that. Um, you know, you are right. Uh, if you look at the people to people, if you look at the business relationship, it's very, very strong. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, for a lot of people, uh, it is very difficult to imagine uh, that we could reach the state of relations that we have today. So why has this happened? I would say uh, uh, definitely uh, there is some history, you know. Uh, I mean, for the non-Indians in the room, I should remind you that uh, in the 1980s, uh, Indian uh, Air, uh, Air India plane was blown up flying out of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Canada. And uh, in many ways, that, that's a kind of an overhang because it wasn't just an incident. It was a, it was a reflection of, of something which is going on there. But 
at a time when many people felt that, look, those are, that's all behind us, I think developments in the politics uh, went in a different direction. Uh, and uh, we are seeing, to some degree, uh, the consequences of that. So, again, I, I give you the, the first observation that, you know, uh, the broad attitude versus the specific. And I give you two, three examples of it. You know, uh, Canada has just, uh, uh, they, they uh, asked us to uh, su uh, subject our uh, high commissioner to a police uh, uh, inquiry, you can say. And we chose to withdraw the high commissioner and diplomats. Now, by, you know, look, look at it. They seem to have a problem if Indian diplomats are even trying to make efforts to find out what is happening in Canada on matters which directly pertain to their welfare and security. But look what happens in India. Canadian diplomats have no problem going around collecting information on our military, on our police, profiling people, targeting people to be stopped in Canada. So apparently, the license that they give themselves is, you know, is totally different from the kind of restrictions that they impose on, uh, uh, on diplomats uh, in Canada. Or even take the press. I'm at a press event. Now, you know, when we tell them, saying, look, uh, you have people openly threatening, leaders of India, diplomats of India, you know, sometimes the threat is not just verbal, it's physical. So their answer is freedom of speech. Okay? Now, when Indian journalists make social media comments, I mean, if you threaten the Indian High Commissioner, he is supposed to accept it as freedom of speech. But if an Indian journalist says the Canadian High Commissioner walked out of South Block looking very grumpy, it is apparently foreign interference. <laughs> now, how, you know, look, look at the, uh, I mean, this is not even, uh, double standards are a very mild word for it. So, look, there is this thing that we, we will con do it differently at home, we will different, do it differently abroad. We will do it our way, but that doesn't apply to you. So I think these are the larger, uh, I would say, adjustments which have to happen uh, in this changing world. Uh, 